Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Human Rights Group, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, accuses the federal government of uh, flouting court orders in the cases of Shiite leader Ibrahim El Zagzaki and former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki. The Catholic Church advises the federal government to be more tolerant uh, of uh, to be more tolerant by allowing Nigerians to express themselves. Also, the APC flag bearer in Ekiti State governorship election, Kaode Fayemi promises good governance if re-elected. Governor Hayodile Fayashi insists he would lose again. And a family of six indicted in the bomb blast which killed at least 13 persons in three Indonesian churches. tonight with the accusation from human rights group the social economic rights and accountability project against the federal government with detailing flagrant disregard of court orders Serap specifically mentioned the tension of Shiite leader Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki and the former national security advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki Serap is petitioning the UN special rapporteur Mr. Diego Garcia Sayan asking him to prevail on the government of President Mahmoud Buhari to end what they describe as persistent disobedience of court rulings and orders. According to the organization, if the federal government's selective enforcement of court orders is not urgently addressed, it would ultimately put the rule of law in Nigeria under siege. In the petition dated May 11, 2018, Serap Deputy Director Timothy Adewale says, Nigerian authorities have disobeyed court orders in several cases, including those involving the Islamic movement of Nigeria leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zek El Zagzaki and his wife, the former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, and Serap. Many state governments in Nigeria also continue to flagrantly disobey court orders with almost complete impunity. In the petition, dated May 11, 2018, and signed by Serap Deputy Director Timothy Adewale, the organization is asking the UN to prevail on the government to refrain from any threats or interference that may hamper judiciary independence. In commemoration of the 2018 World Communications Day, the Archdiocesan Communications Director of the Catholic Church, Reverend Father Patrick Alumunku, has asked the federal government to be more tolerant by allowing Nigerians to express themselves. The cleric, who spoke at a special mass for Nigerian media practitioners in Abuja, warned the federal government against taking advantage of the legislation on hate speech to gag the press ahead of the 2019 general elections. It's a moment for singing and dancing as the Catholic Church joins the rest of the world to celebrate the World Communication Day. At a special holy mass for Nigerian media practitioners to mark the day, the Archdiocesan Communication Director of the Catholic Church warns government against gagging the press under the guise of hate speech. The emphasis on hate speech, which targets media houses With the admonition to the government, Father Lumuku prays for Nigerian media practitioners present at the Holy Mass. The special advisor to President Buhari on media and publicity, who is a guest at the Mass, however warns Nigerians against destroying the nation through hate speeches, while the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party expresses confidence in the ability of the Nigerian media to stand their ground. When it comes to hate speech, 
the onus is on every Nigerian to check himself. Some people originate those hate speeches, and then some people transmit it. They continue to share it and share it without verifying it. So the onus is on every one of us to ensure that we are not purveyors of hatred, because hatred can destroy a whole country. The Nigerian media has been, always been resilient and has survived all manner of harassment, intimidation, and insults and every format of things from every from some governments in power. I believe that this is the time that our nation needs the support of the Nigerian media. It must remain resilient. The special holy mass, which attracted media practitioners within the nation's capital, has as its theme journalism for peace. The suspected killer of a Nigerian diplomat in Sudan has been arrested by the country's authorities. Sudan's official news agency described the killer as a foreign woman, although it did not disclose details of her nationality. The victim, Mr. Habibu Almu, an assistant controller of immigration at the embassy in Khartoum, was found stabbed to death at his home in the Sudanese capital. According to a statement by the Sudanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the woman has confessed to murdering Mr. Almu and stealing his possessions. The statement says a team of policemen had arrested a number of suspects as part of the murder investigations. The federal government had condemned the murder of the diplomat and pledged to work with Khartoum to arrest the culprit. As the federal government continues to explore options aimed at diversifying the economy, a director of the Nigerian American Council in Washington, D.C., Mr. Sam Bono, has called for the deepening of bilateral relations with the U.S. government. Addressing the news conference in Abuja on the gains and challenges of President Buhari's recent visit to the U.S., Mr. Mbono explains that such trips achieve better mileage with an economic team. He asked President Buhari to always take advantage of such bilateral meetings to market the nation's resources to the international community. There were opportunities that were not captured in that trip from the Nigerian side. Any time a president of a major country gets up on a plane and flies across the ocean to meet with the president of another major country, they need to be prepared with a list of bilateral issues that will be in the light most favorable to themselves. Now, we did not see that in Washington. I have been around uh, Washington and probably learned under six different presidents. When the president of the United States travels to China, at a minimum, he takes a bunch of business executives with him because the business community are going to be having their own dialogue at the same time. They take along the most vital interests of the country that they are presiding over and present it to reach a kind of a mutual or bilateral understanding on how they will create favor for themselves. They don't just go to go buy stuff. You can buy planes from Abuja. You can stay in Asorok and enter into the contract to go buy a bunch of airplanes. You don't have to go there to go sign for the airplanes. And so this is a missed opportunity. The federal government will be closing the 2017 budget with a capital spending in excess of 1.5 trillion naira. That's according to the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adyoshun, who revealed this in a series of tweets. Mrs. Adyoshun pointed out that the figure is higher than what the federal government achieved in the 2016 budget, while government is also looking forward to the passage of the 2018 budget by the National Assembly. The minister further disclosed that more than 5 million new taxpayers have been added to the nation's tax base in the last two years. She commended the Federal Inland Revenue Service for going after tax defaulters, stressing the need for the nation to diversify its revenue base. The minister said while the government was borrowing at an average cost of about 18% in 2017, the cost has now reduced to 13% this year. She noted that the government would not relent in its resolve to continue to work very hard on the debt service cost. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo, says the commission is completely independent and is discharge of duties. 
Professor Yakubu was speaking to Channel Television's Ladi Akerodulwale on our special program, Roadmap 2019, saying since he assumed duty, he has not been pressurized from any quarters. He also insists that even if such pressure comes, INEC will resist stoutly. The independence comes from the integrity of election managers. It's not necessarily drawn from um, statutory provisions. I have been under no pressure since I came here from any quarters to do what is wrong, and I will never do what is wrong. Secondly, yes, the president appoints, but it's, I think, better to say the president nominates. If you look at the constitutional processes for appointing the commission, first, the president has to consult with the National Council of State. The National Council of State is made up of all the governors, uh, serving presiding officers of the National Assembly, the former chief justices of the Federation, the former presidents and heads of state. So that is a process of consultation with Nigeria. Then it's submitted to the National Assembly, and the National Assembly screens the candidates, and then submits their recommendations to the president, who swears the commission in. However, the process of removing the commission is also very clearly defined by law. Um, is by two-thirds majority of the two chambers of the National Assembly or by way of resignation, uh, voluntary resignation, or in the case of ill health, uh, which is an obvious thing, by resignation by, by ill health. So I think there are sufficient safeguards in the law. The independence is what you make of that independence. But since I assumed duty on the 9th of November 2015, I have been under no pressure from any quarters at all. And this commission will never yield to pressure from any quarters. We invite you to join us in watching the full interview with Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. It airs right here on Channel Television on Roadmap 2019 on Monday, May 14th at 9 p.m. We're staying with politics. Imo State APC lawmakers in the House of Representatives of the State House of Assembly have asked the national leadership of the party to cancel local government congresses scheduled for Monday, May 14, 2018, until all issues are resolved. This follows the arrest and parade of four suspects in connection with the missing Congress materials meant for the Ward Congress in Imo State on May 5th. The lawmakers have described the recent developments as the height of impunity that should be condemned by well-meaning Nigerians and stakeholders in the APC. They also asked the national leadership of the party to fix a new date for the conduct of the ward and local government congresses in the state, as time is of the essence. We know that the national chairman had postponed Imo local government congress pending the resolution of all issues surrounding the war congress of the 5th May 2018. Worried that the state chapter of APC have announced the holding of local government congress on Monday, 14th May 2018, contrary to the earlier pronouncement of the national chairman. We applaud the Nigerian police for the arrest of persons who with Imo Ward and local government congress results sheets, which has confirmed the earlier position of Imo APC member that no Ward Congress was held in Imo State on 5th of May 2018. We call on the national chairman and national leadership of APC to call off any purported Congress tomorrow, Monday 14th May 2018, or any other day until the issues relating to the Ward Congress in Imo State are resolved. We further request that a new date or dates be fixed for the conduct of ward and local government congresses in Imo State as time is of essence in this matter.